Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Great rising. This is a pop up with Campbell's Creation early this morning. I'm working on my log cabin blocks and I just want to pop up early to say good morning and work on do a little sewing and maybe some chatting. Um, if I can get it pulled up here on this, let's see. If I can get it pulled up, yes. I want to pull it up so I can see who I'm chatting with. If this so I can see. Okay. Hello, Kim. How you doing? She said, hello, Miss Ellen. Hello, Brenda Foley. Good morning, sweet lady. She says, good rising, good rising. It's a blessing, y'all. We made the wake up call. I'm just working on my log cabin blocks again this morning. And I thought I would do a pop up so I can have somebody to chat with while I work on this. I'm not really doing much. I have about five or six of these I already made over here. And I'm making them like this because I like the many different designs you can do with these like this. Um, and I don't know how many I'm going to make. I'm just sewing. Got my scissors back out. These scissors went on the trip with me, y'all. I've been looking for them. I had to unpack some things. And I'm still finger pressing my seams to one side. Amen. Uh, Brenda Foley says, very happy to be alive and not affected by tornadoes and storms. Amen to that. Amen. You know, some people lost all their houses, all their personal belongings. And I'm going to tell y'all, it's just a hard time. Right now, FEMA is helping people, but the little money they help you with, I don't think it's enough to uh, help you to uh, get your home back. It ain't enough. People are suffering, going through stuff. And then when they do crazy things, it's like the system, like, what's wrong with them? Why would they do something like that? That because they stress. They when you hear the Bible speak about spiritual murder, sometimes people be feeling like they've been murdered. And that's a hurting feeling. It's like it take it's a process you need healing from. Um on the folder said, I love the log cabin on my to-do list. Oh, that's so sweet. I remember the pattern because I was in the swap with my quilt hanging on the wall there. And that's a log cabin block, too, by the way. And I said, I always said I was going to do another one. And this is my another one. Okay, I have the black. I'm trying to make sure I get this right. I really don't want to be messing it up. And I'm surprised everybody else is up with me this morning. I like doing lives when I'm uh, by myself and have y'all I can talk with. 
What y'all working on this morning? Kim said, I have 19 quilt tops done, so they have to be turned into usable quilts before I start more, plus three that are sandwiches and ready to quilt, and three more that I need to finish. Wow. Kim, you've been very busy. Kim said, I have a friend who lost five members of her family in the tornado that hit southern Missouri. Oh, my God. Many, many prayers, Kim. Oh, my God. Five members in one day. Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father. Jesus, I call on your name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. The family, oh God, I'm calling out your name for them, oh God. I ask that you just be that bind and strength that they need, oh Lord. For you designed us to be happy and to move forward in life. So I'm praying for them, oh Lord God. I thank you for all the blessings that you already given us, oh Lord God. Including the forgiveness of sin, oh Lord God. I just thank you for all you doing, how you keep us. How you working in our life, oh Lord God. I just want to thank you and ask that you touch this family. Help them to pull through every situation, every grief. Help them strive through it, oh, Lord God. In your holy name, in your blessed son, Father, I cry out in the name of Jesus for you to restore this blessing upon that family. I pray, amen, amen. Oh, my God, amen. Whew. I apologize, y'all, if I'm getting too emotional. Oh, my God. But y'all don't know. Mm. To lose five family members, I'm sorry, y'all, because I, you know, been kind of just going through and hearing stuff and um, my daughter, you know, tornado hit where she was living at back home and it was a few people passed away didn't make it and my daughter along with her husband and my grandchildren all of them witnessed everything you know everything around them it wasn't no sugar coating it and you can't you know hide your kids from whatever is going on in the world. Like if God stepping back, uh, you know, allowing things to happen, it's for a reason. And I just wanted to pray right then because when she said five, that really hit at me. I'm sorry. I can feel that pain. Um, I can't even see anything without my glasses if I can... <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my Lord. Kim says, um, seven died in that town and five were her family. Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm sorry for their loss. Um... Brenda Foley said, but I'm working on a, a, a wiener dog in a sweater pillow for my granddaughter. Did I say that correct, uh, Brenda? Brenda says, amen. Kim says, thank you, Miss Ellen. She lost her mom, her stepdad, her daughter, and her boyfriend and a cousin. Brenda said, never apologize. Thank y'all for understanding. I'm just, I'm just taught, you know, it touched me deep. You know, it's not easy losing anybody in your family or even a neighbor. 
a neighbor you used to getting up saying good morning to, you know, when you walk outside. It's not easy. And I need some more fabric. Oh, I have my strips already cut and I put them in a little container here where I just have to grab a piece and Oh, that really, I'm going to be praying for her. She lost a lot of family members. I will be keeping her in my prayers. I don't know her name, but I know she's the lady, lives in Missouri, and lost five family members. Ooh. So... Anybody else sewing on anything? Hi, Lucy Scott. Good morning. Grand Rising. Glad to have you in chat this morning. Kim said, never apologize for praying for someone. No, I wasn't apologize for praying. I was apologizing because I was crying. Hi, Lucy. Ooh. I usually would get up and be sewing like this, y'all. Often, many mornings, but once I got sick, I couldn't do it. But now I feel much better now. I can get up and get back to my routines because normally when I pull out a project and work on it, you won't see that project too often. Look how far I am now. And... The reason for that is I go and get through with it because I still have a vast amount of quilt tops that I have to get quilted up as well. And I'm working on, well, I have one that I have sandwiched up. And I haven't started quilting on it yet. And I have another one I was working on, which is the Wakanda quilt. And I was trying to figure out how to get my letterings on it. And it dawned on me that I can paint them on, you know, use fabric paint. Or I could do a heat transfer or something like that. But I don't want the heat transfer. I was actually wanting the fabric to cut the letters out with the fabric and then applique them on. Uh, Kim says, you don't have to apologize for the tears either. We understand. So does God. Oh, thank you, Kim. You so sweet. I just love talking to y'all. When I tell y'all, I feel more happier and excited when I have y'all that I can come on and talk to. And I'm really looking to expand my group, my uh, my channel. I'm still striving to get to a thousand subscribers. And my reason for that is I tell y'all all the time I'm going to donate my proceeds to someone in need. And I won't be getting them per se, so I know they will be going to the right spot. I like helping people as well. And I created this channel in the beginning for a place to store my how-to, how to make quills or how I make quills or how you cut this fabric, and just to have a list of how I do it. It was never for a profit. Um, 
Hold on just a minute, please. Baby, I'm on live. Can I call you back? We need to what? Wait a minute. Let me mute and then you can tell me. Let me mute my video. Y'all excuse me a minute. She says it's important. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm back. Um, I'm sorry. That was my granddaughter. And I, I'm really have to call her back because what she was telling me was something uh, we got to talk over. Um, she called me to tell me about her dream. Oh, how do I go back? Okay. You, okay. Kim said, Brenda, that sounds adorable. She'll love it. I'm sorry if I missed the comment, y'all. Can y'all hear me? But you know, when people tell me stuff, y'all, and it's sad, it really hits home with me. And then other stuff comes up, like my granddaughter just called me about her dream and stuff. I've been teaching her to pray. I've been talking to her about prayer and pray every night before she go to bed. And she said, I've been doing that. Mm. She said, I've been doing that. I pray before I go to bed, Grandma. And she said, well, I will have to talk to her first. But she's had a vision or a dream or something about something big is coming. And it's not going to be pretty. But I do thank God for all he do. Because I, everything he do is for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Some things happen is probably because, you know, somebody need help or is to show you something about a person. And I tell a lot of my friends when I talk to them and they be going through different situations and different stuff. And I tell them, I said, look, I said, you ain't supposed to hate nobody. Nobody. God said, love your enemies. Keep your enemies close. And I believe that you ain't supposed to hate nobody, you know, at all. When somebody do something to you, you pray for them and forgive them. God, I love the person. I said, if you want to hate something, hate the sin. Because Jesus died for all of our sins. Hate the sin, because sin what's got us into the position we're in now. But guess what? 
Jesus gave us the key to the door to come out of sin. He took it all up on his, his cross. He did it for me, you, Peter, Sam, Sarah, Betty, everybody. And I love me some Jesus. I know this is someone's channel, but when it come down to the Lord and what he done for me, I have been sitting, thinking, looking back, y'all over my life and I can see where God had been keeping me. He had been ordering my steps, my word, my works, everything I do and say. It been him. Cause if it was not for him, I would have been dead a long time ago. And I can see where he was keeping me. I can remember when I had a snake crawl upside my bed and went over under my bed. And I'm laying there. I look dead at the snake. I laid there and played like I was dead. And the snake went on under the bed. I knew if I moved, I couldn't get up. I couldn't get up. I couldn't holler. If I moved and jump up, run and holler, it would have bit me and I would have been dead. So I laid there and I called on the name of Jesus while I was laying there. I just laid there, and when I got through calling on the name of Jesus, I opened my eyes. It was the next day because I had them fell back to sleep. And when I got up, I forgot that a snake had crawled over behind the bed. And somebody told me, how is you going to forget a snake in the house? <laughs> I said, you know what? I called on the name of Jesus. That's how I forgot. Jesus wasn't ready for me to try to do nothing about that snake. If I had it, it would have bit me. And I would have no longer been here uh, even live talking to y'all. And I, I witnessed that. That happened to me in real life. And Kim says, amen, Miss Ellen. Brenda said, there is 57 pieces in each block. Only make one. Oh, they might be talking about another pattern. Kim said, oh, my goodness, Brenda. That's a lot of pieces. 57, it sure is. What type of quilt is that, Miss Brenda? I be stitching backwards, y'all, to lock in my stitches. That's the only reason. And I do that because I probably say it on every video, but I do it because I don't want my quilt pieces or blocks to pull apart if a quilter have to tug on it a little bit. Mm hmm. I need to be quilting up my quilt still a piece and blocks, but I just wanted to piece this so bad. I just wanted to do it. Nice little cute little blocks. <laughs> and I still haven't ironed any. I'm just waiting until I can get a few done up. And I have my little squares and stuff I already cut. I use what I got, my straps. Well, this is not really scraps, but this some fabric I had got from Walmart. I got like one yard cuts, which they already have them cut for you. And I just picked up a pack of this black and white polka dot. I picked it up to make something else out of it or with it and never did so. 
Lucy Scott said, oh, Miss Ellen, I just love listening to you. I miss Sunday church service. Just listening to you, I feel okay about it now. LOL. <laughs> I'm glad I'm able to help Lucy. But even when you get to church, read. Read your Bible. Still read. Um, I like reading in Psalms, the book of which the book of Psalms is really prayers. They're really prayers. Sometimes when I run up on somebody's name in the Bible and it read like a prayer or God promise or covenant to them, I put my name in that position. I be praying and I just add my name because when you add your name and you praying, you praying a specifically prayer for yourself when you special when you need something. And you know we all need something some sometime. I ain't gonna say all of the time, but sometime. <laughs> and I just love praying anyway, because to me, prayer is my key in communication to building my relationship with God. And I'm not going to tell nobody I'm perfect. I'm not even up here trying to do that. I'm not perfect. I'm striving to be. I want to be. That's when we, when we come into play. When he said, take up your cross and follow after me. That's what Jesus meant. You want to be like him? Come on. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with trying, you know. You might succeed, and then you almost might succeed. But God knows we're trying to please him. Sometimes we make mistakes. But out of it all, I learned to live, love everybody. I love everybody. People will show you who they are. And when they show you, there ain't no reason to argue and fuss about it because you know sin is in this world. And just because you disagree with somebody don't mean that you ain't perfect. That's a lot of stuff be happening, y'all. A lot of stuff. But I thank God he can open our eyes to it and we can learn from it and we can move on. That's the blessing part of it. I really love showing others how I do things. I have uh, a young lady that would like to learn how to sew. And she have been in the live in my chat before. Y'all remember Ashara? I want to start teaching her how to sew and make stuff. So, well, actually, I'm going to go a little bit further than that. I'm not going to push it on her, but I'm going to, what you call it? I'm going to encourage her to start her own business. Uh, Kim says, I have a huge bag of debt. It's full of strings of several width and some random scraps pieces. It's a bag that is king size, comforter size, and it is full of fabric scrap. That's awesome, Kim. Lucy Scott said, all I heard was read your Bible. <laughs> yes, I keep my Bible in my bed with me, y'all. It might seem a bit over the top, a bit much to some people, but yes, I keep my Bible in my bed with me. And I read it. Like if I'm listening at something on YouTube and they say, go with me to first Colossians or first Corinthian or something like that. I have my Bible right there where I can just grab it and follow to make sure 
that what they saying is accurate. And when I can read that they're teaching straight from the Bible, then, okay, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to uh, continue to read and follow you. That's how I do it. Um, Kim Bird says, it's fine here, Lucy. Try going out and coming back in. Yes, if your signal is bad, yeah, and you might have bad weather in the area. Try going out and coming back in. See what that help you. And y'all do give me the thumbs up. Give me the thumbs up I'm tr to help support my channel so I can always come back and tell my life stories, things that happened to me. And I have had so many things to happen in my life, though. Even from a young child, I used to see certain stuff that I wasn't sure of what it was. Things used to just happen around my house, and I'm like, Jesus. Even then, as a child, I would call on Jesus. My first church I went to, it was a sanctified church, y'all. I went to a sanctified church. I was baptized first at a sanctified church where we would have nights where we just go to church and pray. We'd be down on our knees for ourselves praying. Prayer, pray, pray. It's praying, you know, calling on God to help give us the Holy Spirit. And that's strange how we be praying for the Holy Spirit. And Jesus already said in his words when he left, when he ascended up to his father, he didn't want anybody to touch him until after he had ascended. And when he ascended, he left the Holy Spirit back for each and every one of us. And we be praying for the Holy Spirit and stuff. But that's how I tell people Jesus is already with us. He left the Holy, his Holy Spirit with us. We just have to grow that Holy Spirit in our relationship with God. I done been through some things, so many things, things that should probably had already took me out of him. That's why I can sit here and tell people God is real. He is real. Things happen in your life for a reason. We might not understand what that reason is, or we might not even know or ever find out. But the older you get, you're going to look back on life and see these things. You're going to remember, oh, yeah, I do remember that happened to me, or I remember this taking place. It happened for a reason, y'all. I can remember just seeing how blessed I was. The area I was living in, in Mississippi, which my house is still there now, and I do plan on going back home someday soon, hopefully. Excuse me, y'all. But yes, I do plan on going back home, but I can see the times when I was literally, when it's a scripture in the Bible speaks about when you're treading on scorpions and you can even drink poison and it won't do nothing to you. Let me tell y'all, that is true. I was literally treading on snakes and didn't now bite me. You hear me? God was keeping me. And I can live to testify to it. Literally. And you can't really tell everybody, you know, what had to happen to you. But once you didn't experience, how can you keep it to yourself? How can you? 
I mean, the glory of God is a, is at hand now. And we already know the glory is not for us, it's for God. But just to testify to the greatness of God and the goodness of God. Oh, boy. It cranks me up. It get me going. It even helped me to think, you know. Sometimes when you go through something with somebody, I don't look at it like um, somebody really just did me wrong. They could be doing me wrong. I don't look at it like that, though. I just look at it as the glory of God showing me, you know, the kind of stuff that's in the world, what you have to be careful about because some things can be just less than teaching you. You can't help everybody. You cannot help everybody. And when you can't help everybody, you wonder why. Because God can be dealing with a person. He can be trying to fix them, to straighten them out. And then you come along and get in front of God, messing with his work. And then stuff start going sour for you or going wrong for you. And that could be the reason why. I mean, you didn't intend on stepping in front of God, so, but he was trying to get our attention by showing us the first place, you know, or letting something take place that we didn't like. I just say, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Because I don't play with God, y'all. I, I know y'all don't either. We do know he can uh, cause whatever he wants to happen to happen. He's Alpha, he's Omega, the beginning and the ending. He can do whatever he choose to do. And I got to the point to where I used to just think, you know, I don't, I just tell people, you don't want none of this. I said, one bite of me, <laughs> like if a snake or a dog or something try to bite me, I'd be like, you don't want none of this. One bite of me, you ain't going to make it. I said, I plead the blood of Jesus. One bite of me is you like you taking a bite of Jesus and you can't handle that. And I go to talking to these dogs and these animals and stuff. I don't have no problem with them. Let me catch up on my messages. Let me see. Okay, y'all talking to one another. It said, those Elizabeth Hartman patterns are gorgeous. Oh, I would love to see one of her patterns. I see a lot of quilt patterns that be out there, and they look like they real complicated. And all the time, they be simple. They be smaller methods that we already know and it been put together to make a larger quilt and then beautiful they be so beautiful look complicated but it's really not the only quilt that i ran into that has been real complicated for me y'all and i ain't figured that one out yet y'all probably gonna laugh at me but it's that cleopatra that clear platter uh, block, I ain't figured that one out yet. I can get half of it done, but making the reverse side half, I can't do it. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? I can't flip that. <laughs> I can't do it. Every time I try to practice on it, I get my pieces cut out and... It don't work. So I said what I was going to do was I was going to watch some more videos on it. Because y'all know YouTube University got some of everything. They'll teach you how to do it. I'm 
I'm gonna look up some and see can I find some of her patterns, Elizabeth. Um, Lucy says, LOL, one bite of me. <laughs> Yes, Lucy, one bite of me, they can't handle it. It could take them out. Just imagine something evil or mean bite you and you pleading the blood of Jesus over your life and they bite and get filled with the Holy Spirit. They automatically change. One bite, yeah. <laughs> I love someone. It's just when I'm sick, even when I'm sick, sometimes I still be trying to sew. And when I do that, sometimes I get my daughter or friends like y'all or somebody tell me, now you need to go lay down and get you some rest. And I'd be like, but I want to finish it. They'd be like, you can finish this later. <laughs> Even back home in Mississippi, when I would be home, I, would be, I used to live alone there by myself too in Mississippi because all my children are grown. Two of them is married with children of their own. And I would be at home in the back room sewing. Just sewing down. Somebody come to my house, they be knocking on the door. I don't really get that much, I mean, company out in the country. So I spent most of my time watching PVS on TV where they teach and learning um, sewing and crochet. And oh Lord, what the lady name? Nancy Zebraman. She was on the channel, and I watched a lot of her work. And they also had sewing and crochet circles. I watched a lot of that too. And years back, I learned to crochet through a friend of the family, but before I met her, I was teaching myself to crochet. I wasn't doing it correctly, but I was crocheting. <laughs> I was making hats, and every time I would make a hat, somebody wanted to buy it. I sold it to them for a little nothing. Back then, I think it might have been maybe $5 or something like that. And it was a whole set. It wasn't just a hat. I made the hat with the scarves. It's just lately since I've been up here, it's like Arthur Riders. Y'all know old man Arthur. Kind of been working with my hands and stuff. And I had surgery on this wrist. And this is my crochet hand. So it kind of slowed me down a bit from crocheting. And I started sewing a little bit more. But I used to could sit and crochet a hat and a scarf within about an hour and a half. I was fast. And I was always by myself. I didn't really have anybody to talk to. Y'all excuse me. I got notifications on the screen. I need to take those down. Okay. I used to just crochet. I could crochet real fast. A lot of people would see me and I would do it in public. I ain't scared to sew in public. I ain't scared to crochet in public. I just do what I have to do. 
That is not long enough. That's why I pull out another piece. Even though this piece here is not long enough, I'm laying it right here because when I first start my block off, I get to use it. Okay. I'm going to take one of these ends and just cut off that salvage edge. And I say these little pieces, I don't throw them away. The reason for that is those little tiny scraps like that, I dreamed that when I get my bus that I was going to make myself a mattress. I'm going to make a mattress to go on my bed for my bus. And I want to do it in a, like a twin size. And I know I can do it because I have done it before. I have helped my mom and my neighbor that was doing the re reupholstery for my mom watch and helped her to um, do some furniture. That's why I, re I can reupholst the chairs and stuff like that. It's just I don't have the strength in my hand anymore to really, really, really reinvent furniture. Like I used to love doing it. I'm counting my rows, y'all. While I'm adding these strips. Uh, Kim Burr says, I have a lot of yarn. So I'm making a big afghan, nothing fancy, just single crochet stitches, but it will be warm and I'm enjoying it. I know that's right. I like that, Kim. It will be warm and beautiful at the same time, even though it's going to be simple, as you say, and you're going to enjoy it, it's still going to be beautiful. I have made um, big afghans or what I call uh, a crocheted quilt. <laughs> what I did was I just crocheted blocks. I had a certain size block that I would just crochet it, whether it was like I would chain 51 chains. And then I'll go back and stitch 50 stitches across. And then I will fit, stitch it until it's about 50 rows wide. And I used to do that in different colors like gray, blue, yellow, green. And once I had um, so many of the squares done, I will take my time and go back and stitch around the squares that way when you connect them all together it'll go nice and smoothly but yes i used to make a whole blanket like that it takes a time but um i think i made mine in less than three months because i was doing it every day I was doing it every day. I enjoyed it. There's another one. I done got two done. I really, 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 really like making these. Look, my pile getting a little big here, y'all. I forgot how many I had to have last time when I made that wall hanging miniature quilt. And I'm going to lay it out and see because this might be about 
I don't know, about maybe eight or nine blocks here. Let's go again. I have this small piece here. I can add it to my block here to start it off. And this piece will have the savage edge in it. But I like making my stuff different. <laughs> so I'm over to trim off so it won't be too bad. Lined up to my one fourth inch seam allowance. How many of y'all had to learn to uh, keep the one fourth inch seam allowance when you first started quilting? What type of fun did y'all have getting it together, keeping it straight? I would love to know. I met Molly. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Molly and Molly loves Lasagna. She said when we left Florida, it was 94 and got here, it was 21. Ooh. Retreated to Georgia, but it get warmer here too. Yes, Georgia is warm. It's like Mississippi weather. I enjoy being in Mississippi, y'all. I could take my jacket off and walk around. I ain't had to have it on. I really miss that weather. And you in Georgia. I like that. Yes, welcome in. I'm glad you was able to stop by and say hello. Y'all got any quilting going down in Georgia? Y'all, I'm so ready for my bus so I can travel. I want to meet a few different peoples. But I also want to be able to sew on my journey because I once was supposed to be getting into car seats upholstery. And I didn't do that, but I saw, do y'all watch Van City Van Life? I watched Chrome take his seat loose and put it back together and I, it looked so easy. He put, put a replacement cover on it. And I was like, wow, he did that so easy. The reason I'm saying this, y'all, is because I was to learn how you take the seat off, the covers off of the car seats, pick them apart, use the cut fabric for patterns. Uh, the leather or which one it is. And I do have a way to purchase my leather. I have a whole kit I purchased when I was in Mississippi back here for doing our car seats reupholstery. I mean, learning how they quilt them up and sew the, what is it? It ain't zigzags. It's uh, that diamond shape into the car seats and everything. I mean, I was hound dogging those videos, watching, trying to learn. But after my wrist went bad and I wound up had to have surgery after I move up here, the only thing I could do to get close to doing anything for a car was to get my own shop vet. And that's for detailing the insides of a car. That was it. All right, here when this short piece will come in. 
Um, oh, Marley says she's right outside of Decatur, Kim. Decatur, Illinois. It's all right. How do I supposed to do this first? Let's... To use it all. Before I go to that piece, let's save it for another one and put this one on. Mm. I'm making all my little scrap pieces work for me, y'all. I guess when I'm done, I'll go make me a nice cup of coffee. I love me some Folgers. Tastes like Folgers. I can remember having breakfast and I tell my dad, my father, Daddy, would you save me some of your coffee? <laughs> he would do so. I think my daddy spoiled me. Everything my daddy would do, like work around the house or something, I usually want to try to do it too. But now that I'm grown, I can look back and see when a lot of that work I did, I shouldn't have been doing it. But I did it anyway because my father was much older than my mother. And when they really got old, they couldn't really do what needed to be done. So I was the one that stepped in and did it. After all my older siblings and stuff, they got grown and left home. And I don't regret doing none of it. I loved it. I always have loved hard work. I guess something wrong with me. <laughs> okay, the black. I'm going this way. I'm rotating it backwards. Did I lose a piece? I guess I used up all that black. Got to pull out another one. I cut this savage edge off and save it. Y'all know what I would like to do one day with all these little tiny scrap pieces like this. I would love to glue. Um, I'm not going to say heat and burn. But I would love to glue them to a larger piece of fabric and draw something in it. Y'all kind of get the idea? I kind of be drawing with scrap pieces of fabric, but I don't know what I'm drawing just yet. I'll just be putting it together until I figure it out. I love doing stuff like that. And once I'm done gluing it down like that, get it on, then you go back and take your time and just sew every piece down. It's not embroidery, but it's embroidery style because you still got to sew down the fabric. Um... Kim said, Granite City is right beside St. Louis and St. Elmo is further east. Mm. I've been to St. Louis before with one of my brothers, my elderly brother. We passed through there. Uh, Kim said, Folgers is definitely the best. Yes! <laughs> I love me some Folgers coffee. Uh, Molly says, I was in St. Louis last week. 
it was the first time I have ever been there. Beautiful city and wonderful peoples. Oh, that's awesome. I be listening to a, um, a van lifer that lives there. And to me, she sounds really, really afraid of St. Louis. Like you really have to be on your P's and Q's and watch your surroundings. Um, Molly said, I saw the arch from a distance. I will go back and spend some time there soon. Oh, that's awesome. I saw the arch too from a distance. I ain't go to it. We didn't really stop because we was traveling and we just chose to take that route where we would just pass through St. Louis and see the arch. And back then, you know, in the days, the arch was a big deal. Sort of like the Eiffel Tower. Um, Molly says, I was in New Orleans in October and passed the big Folgers plant. Wonderful smell. It's in New Orleans. Well, I was in New Orleans in November. Um, my sisters and my sister and I, and my niece, we all went on a cruise, and we had to travel to New Orleans to catch the ship. And that was a beautiful experience, but it was lengthy and tired. Like, ooh, we. That's a little trip, man. The lines are so long. Tell y'all the truth. I had to ask for some help. <laughs> Me and my sister had to ask for some help. They had to put us in some wheelchairs and wheelchairs on the boat. My sister was like, no, we can do it. We don't need no chairs. I'm like, she's battling stage four cancer and she don't need no help. I said, girl, you must be doing some kind of good because I need help. I'm going to sit right over, over here because I need help. And she said, you know what? I'm going to sit over here too because I need help too. I, <laughs> I looked at her and smiled. I said, baby, I can't play this. I mean, when I need help, I'm definitely... <clears throat> I'm definitely going to ask for the help. Um, Kim says, there used to be a Folger Center here in Kansas City, but it's a distributing center now. I still smell amazing down here. It still smell amazing. That's good. I just can't wish I could smell it. If I knew how to take the Folgers coffee and make um, frappes with it, that's what I would put in my frappe. McDonald's don't know nothing today than experience some Folgers coffee. I don't know if that's Columbia coffee they using or what. Not saying Columbia coffee is bad. I'm not talking about neither one of them. Because if I run out of Folgers and somebody got some Maxwell House or something, I'm going to drink it. You know why? I'm the one that's out. I'm the one that's having the trouble. <laughs> Am I doing this right? Yeah. I'm making them all so very different, but I'm putting everything where it's supposed to go. And I'm running my mouth.
Look like my press a foot trying to get away from me. Come back here. I just got my socks on this morning and I might be pushing my pedal away from me. But it ain't sewing until I'm sewing bare feet. Well, at least with my socks on or some of those little soft house shoes. I don't even have them on and I got them in the other room. It's hard to keep something on my feet. I'm a diabetic and I'm supposed to keep something on, but when it comes to sewing, I take it off. I be wanting to enjoy my stitching. I lay my fabric across my shoulder to keep the right side outward. That was the purpose of doing that. I can see the time when I'll be sitting here sewing, y'all. Mm. This didn't sew at all. Let me check my bobbin. I know my bobbin ain't out of thread already. I've been sewing that much. <laughs> Oh, no. It just got cut a little bit too short. All right. I turns this, um, I turn my wheel manual so I can pull up my bobbin thread. And now, where was I? Oh, it's on my lap. I'm losing my place, y'all. Do y'all do that too? Well, that's my reason for doing it live. You can see all my mistakes, all my quirky habits or whatever I do. And how I struggle to keep my fourth inch <clears throat> seam allowance. I used to have, let me show y'all. Sometimes when you're struggling, you can get this thing here And I don't know what's on it. It had, oh, the sticky tabs. They done caught some thread. But this is a seam easy. You can get off of Amazon. And it has the seams here that line up your measurements for what you need to sew by to help you keep your fourth inch seam allowance. And I had it on here on my machine under there. And my little sticky things went bad. And I didn't have any more to put on here to hold it down. So I just put it under the machine until I figure this out. But this is good too. And I have the markings on my machine that help me to keep the one fourth inch seam allowance. Um, Kim said, I can't sew with a shoe on either. Yes. And I use these here sometimes too to help me to keep my seam allowance. I just stick it under there because I got to have some sticky tabs. Um, Molly says, I suggest for your foot pedal, I also have a juke it and I use my pedal backwards and press with my heel. Mm. It keep my foot from getting uh, cramped. 
Oh, that's a nice tip, a good idea. I sew with my foot backwards too, but I use my big toe to mash it down at the back. Because when you mash it at the front, if you aren't going to sew, it'll cut your thread. And I don't want my thread cutting when I'm trying to lock it in. Molly said, I have a size 13 and a half foot, so it helps me a lot. Well, don't feel bad. I got a size 12 foot. <laughs> and don't let it swell up on you. It might be your size too. Kim said, Sean, that's what one son-in-law wear. And the other needs a 14 and a half. Young men, honey, young men's be, feet be growing. Sometimes I tell my uh, nephews and stuff, that's where all their food go to. <laughs> I said, you eat like all your food going straight to your feet. <laughs> I like playing with them, messing with them. I have a nephew. Well, I have two nephews now in Birmingham, Alabama. I have one in Mississippi. No, I have two in Mississippi. I'm wrong again. I have, okay, I'm up to three, uh, four. I'm a little slow, y'all. I'm counting them one by one. I have some nephews in Mississippi. Just leave it like that. That what I'm, I won't leave nobody out. When I get a chance, I try to go visit them and see them. But I get that school bus. They better turn it up because I'm headed that way. Ain't nothing going to hold me back. I'd be love to see my family. I have good friends that I call family too. And I'm like, to me, family ain't either all about blood relations. Family is how you treat me, how we get along well together, you know? And I can't wait to see my family. Mm. I'm sitting here early, running my mouth and so on, y'all. I just love this stuff. <laughs> I just love it. I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody's message, but I do want to get this done. Uh, Kim said, both of my daughters wear an 11 or 11 and a half in women. One granddaughter wears a women's 10, and she's just nine years old, but already taller than me. Wow. Growth jeans, growth. I used to be tall going to school. I used to be so tall and my legs were so skinny, y'all. I was so skinny. I used to tell people my legs were so small like I was, like I moved from Cambodia or somewhere. My legs were just that skinny. But it was a health disorder. I found out years later it was a health disorder because I weighed like, I was 18 years old weighing 98 pounds. I couldn't gain no weight for a long time, 98 pounds. And the doctor discovered I had an iron deficiency where I had to have iron tablets. 
And after I started taking them iron tablets, I started getting fat like I blew up like a balloon. Poo. It was too late then. <laughs> them iron tablets blew me up. Um, Molly says, my granddaughter has a 13 also. Grandson, I'm sorry. Grandson has a 13 also. He told his mother, you know what they say about men with big feet? <laughs> they don't fall over easy, LOL. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Some men with big feet are some strong fighters. And they be fighting more than one person at the same time. You ain't gonna get them down. Well, I'm going to do what, put this other side on. I'm so glad I'm able to be back at it, y'all. I just thank God for bringing me through everything I didn't experience and went through. I'm going to call this a day of appreciation, you know. A day that I can say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't want a time to go by that I couldn't say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm going to say it while I have the time in the mind. A lot of time I be sitting up praying and said, Lord, I'm getting old. But whatever happens, don't let me forget about you. Don't ever let me forget about you and what you've done for me. Well, I got that last strip on there, y'all. This one is block number three. And I think this one's going to be my last block on this live. And I'm going to go on and do some other work because I ain't had breakfast this morning. And I can show you that coffee right about now. So let me thank y'all for coming in and joining me this morning. Do like, comment. You know we love to talk in this chat here. Comment and subscribe to my channel. If you like joining in, you're welcome to join in to chat with us. Nobody is stuck up on this channel. We're going to speak our minds. We take in consideration other people's feelings as well because we want to be the good and the greatness that we want to see in others. So I love y'all. Very pretty, Miss Ellen Kim says. Thank you, Kim. Molly said, I'm glad I got here on your live at last. Thank you for coming in, Molly. Please do come back and join us again. I mostly go lives on Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 1 o'clock. If I'm not live, I'll try to make a post, you know, to let y'all know something going on with me. Or if I don't post at all, then I'm really sick or something. So... Just know that I will be back unless and I can't come back. And then, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, oh, thank you, Kim. Say, I love you too, Miss Ellen. God bless you. God bless you too, Kim. God bless each and every one of y'all. I appreciate y'all coming in and watching. So do share my channel, y'all. 
If you can share it, it'll help me to maybe get up to the thousand subscribers I need. So I will much appreciate it. Thank y'all. Be blessed. Till next time. Bye now. Bye.